Hello everyone, it's the start of the school year so we need to set up our gradebook. So I'm going to show you how to set up your gradebook in Google Sheets and some of the benefits using Google Sheets can have in helping your work life that little bit easier. So let's get going. Okay, so assuming you've got Google Sheets open, the first thing you want to do is bring in the names of your pupils. You might download those from your database. Um, or as I'm going to do is I'm just going to insert, I'm just copying and pasting these ones in. Next thing I want to do is import any standardized data. So again, you might get that from your spreadsheet or another location. And I'm going to put that in the next column so that the data appears there for use later on in the markbook. Third column, I like to put in my SEN data. So they, they might be a level two, dyslexic, and just keep that data in there. In my fourth column, I like to copy in their reports from the last one so that we can keep an eye on it. Now I make it small so that it doesn't take up much in the mark book, but it's there for reference if I need to use it. Next thing I might do is paste in the last assessment marks. And there we are, and you can see the reports just go down to the little box where you can still read them if you want, but they're still there. So there we have their assessment marks. Now, the first tool I'm going to teach you about is using conditional formatting, which will put some nice colours into these scores. So you highlight them all, you go format, conditional formatting, and then color scale over here and then you can choose what color scale you like I like going from, I like going from the greens to the reds except that's the wrong way around so I need to go to the reds to the greens there we are and that gives you a little bit of an indication of the range of scales and it can be also useful to do that on the standardized data just so that you can compare quickly the two colors so I'll do that again conditional formatting color scale just change it so it goes from red to green. Next thing I would do with that data is I'd want to know the average score. So if I go equals, because that means we're going to start a formula, average, open the brackets with it. Highlight the cells you want, close the brackets, hit return, and that tells you the average score was 58%. So the next thing I might be tempted to do is I know the average score for that test was 58%, but what's my average standardized score? So if I do the same again in this square here, equals average, I like the cells I'm looking to do. So I know that my class average is 105. Now what I want to quite often do next is work out what percentage is each pupil off the class average in the standardized data. So I might then make a new column. So I'll insert column left. I'm now going to work out what percentage these are. So these are scores out of 140. So if this is by 140, the percentage score then is 0.75. I'll copy this down into every cell, change it to a percentage. That shows their standardized data score and the percentage data score equals that. Okay, so I might just tidy those up by using this little icon at the top, reducing the number of decimal places, and I just get a simple score there. So I'm going to call that my standardized percentage. And then what I like to know is what proportion they are above or below the average in the class. So if I go insert one left, and then do that one, it equals, I want C minus the C17, but because I'm going to copy this, I need to put in the dollar sign. So when I copy it, it always looks at cell C17, because I always want to minus that, but I'm going to use the copy function to take this down, and I want it to do it for each of the cells on the left. So then that gives me a figure how much on average, you know, standardized that child is percentage up 
or down compared to the rest of the class. Now, I can then do the same thing in this cell here for the year seven exam. So if I bring the, um, the progress indicator, so if I, again, if I do equals their score minus the uh, average score, and again, I need to make it so that the dollar sign is in place. So when I copy it, it stays there. It tells me that this child was minus 6% below the average. And then copy that down, and it gives you some indications about who has performed really well, who hasn't performed really well. And again, if you want to make that uh, more visible to the eye, you can put in the conditional formatting the color scale, red to green, and again, we could do that on the standardized data. So that gives a good indication as well. Oops, sorry, I need to start that one again. Format, sorry, conditional formatting. Red to green. Okay, and then the next one, what I might do is look at the actual, so then who has performed well. So if I do this cell minus this cell, gives an indication actually, this is probably more progress than. I'll call this one placing. And this, this new column will give you progress because it's this child performs 6% below the class in this one, but they should be at the same as the class average. So they are not making progress. They are minus 0.6% progress. However, this child here has made 21% progress. So they're doing really well. So you can begin to see where you need to put in interventions. And again, I'll just show you a quick way to do the conditional format. And if I highlight these column here and use the paint format here, I can then copy it and it will put the conditional formatting straight in for me without having to go through those boxes. This copies the formatting from that set of cells to the next set of cells. Okay, so another tool I might use is called Rank. And this tool ranks the pupils in order, whether it be through an exam or through their standardized data, and allows you to see who should be coming top of the class or who has come top of the class and where the bottom of the class is very easily. So the way you do that is you open up a formula. So you go insert equals rank, open up your bracket, and then I want to rank, for this one, I'm gonna rank the year seven exam there. I'm gonna rank that. And then I need to compare it to all the other exam scores. So then I put a comma in, and then I've selected all the other scores. I now need another comma, and I'm going to write false. And that will mean that it will give the person who's got the highest score a number one, and the person with the lowest score, it will be a number 11. So if I hit enter, that means this person has got the eighth best score. Now, of course, I don't just want it for that person. I want to put it in every column. But the thing I've got to do is I've got to make sure if I'm going to copy and paste it, I always want it to look between H14 and H4. But as I slide it down, it will need to change the H4 to H5, H6, etc. So the way I do that is I have to put the dollar sign in front of the H4 and the H14, and that will mean it will only ever look when it, at those cells when it's copied and pasted. I've not put one in front of H4 in the first bit because that will then copy it down when I slide it. So if I press enter, it will make no change there. But now when I go and take this down, you can see it then ranks the children appropriately. Again, if I do that with the standardized data, I can then get a view of where each pupil sits in the class, in the standardized process, where they should be. So I th 
think I can just copy and paste that. Oh, it won't quite work. I'll have to edit it. Yeah, it doesn't like it. So I want to, so I'm going equals rank and I want to rank uh, D, the D4 which is the first against B dollar four to D dollar 14. Get it. And if I copy that down, it will tell you who, in theory, is the top of your class and who sits at the bottom class according to the standardized data. So the last thing I like in my Mark book that is a really good addition to Google Sheets is called Sparkline. And Sparkline works as a little graph that just sits in your in your worksheet and tells you roughly how the children are doing. And if you create, I like to put it on the left of the names, just so that I can see quickly whether the pupil is improving or not improving. And you can do this with a standardized data or you can do it with just raw data, it doesn't matter. So these, so if you go equals, spark line, open the brackets, and then select the data that you want it to look at, close the brackets, you see it puts this nice little graph into the cell. Obviously you can make that cell then as large to improve it, the size of it, or you can make it smaller. And again, you can copy it down and it will do that for all pupils. And you can go and then just see a little indication of how that they're doing. Okay, so that's how I set my mark book up. I'll fiddle with this and I'll progress this as time goes on and I'll add more into it, add more columns as time happens. But that gives you a little bit of the ideas for functionality from Google Sheets to help improve your mark book and the data that you're managing and so that you can help improve the outcomes for your pupils. Don't forget, please, if you've enjoyed this video, please like it and then you can subscribe and I'll be updating lots more of these videos in the future. Thank you.